All right, this is lesson three, part two, isosceles and equilateral triangles. Here we're going to formalize what I was hoping you would see in the first video. So to start off with, let's just talk about the parts of an isosceles triangle. There's three basic parts. They're the legs. The legs are the congruent sides of the isosceles triangle. So the two congruent sides are called the legs. The third side is called the base. And it is not congruent to the other two sides. And then in blue here we have the base angles. The base angles are the angles that are opposite the congruent legs. Those are your base angles. We have a base angles theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent. So what this says is that we have an, a triangle, and we know that two of the sides are congruent in that triangle, then we can say that those angles that are opposite them are also congruent. So in this picture, if AB is congruent to AC, then we can say that angle B is congruent to angle C. So next we're going to talk about the converse of the base angles theorem. Remember converses are the opposite of theorems. So for the base angles theorem we said if the two sides were congruent then the angles are. Here we're starting with the angles. So, if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. So here, if you see a triangle, and you see that two of its angles are congruent, what you can then say is that the sides opposite them are also congruent. So that for this picture, if angle B is congruent to angle C, then we can say that segment AB is congruent to segment AC. And where we see these theorems helpful is if we're trying to find missing sides or missing angles in a triangle. So we have a couple, well, four examples here. So I want you to pause this video and work with your group to try to solve for the missing variables in these four examples. Let's go ahead and do that now. All right, I'm going to start with number one. I see in number one that this angle and this angle are congruent which since I know the converse of, ba of the base angles theorem that tells me that the opposite sides are congruent so if this is 5 that means that X also has to be 5 2 we're going to use the base angles theorem we see that our two sides here are congruent so we know that the angles opposite them are congruent so if this is 30 that means x also has to be 30. I should have put a degree symbol there. Sorry. 3. We're starting off with angles, so we're going to talk about the base converse of the base angles theorem. So we know that these two are congruent, but it's kind of hard to see right away what x is, but we know if angles uh sorry, sides are congruent, that means that their measures are equal. So that means that I can set this equal to this. So we could say that 5x equals x plus 8. And then we just need to solve the equation. So we find out that x equals 2. And in example 4, we're going to use the base angles theorem. So we know that the x and x have to be the same thing but we have to figure out what that is. Well, we know, thanks to the triangle sum theorem, that all three of these angles have to add up to 180. So we know that x plus x plus 80 equals 180. So now we just have to solve this. So we simplify, we get 2x equals 90. I'm sorry, not 90, 100. Divide by 2, and we see that x equals 50 degrees. 
So there are uses of the base angles theorem and the converse of the base angles theorem. Next we have the equilateral theorem. This works if you have an equilateral triangle. And it says that if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. So any every single equilateral triangle is also equiangular. So in, in this picture, if we see that triangle ABC is equilateral, if we know that all the sides are congruent, then we also know that ABC is equiangular, meaning angle A, B, and C are also congruent. Next we have the equiangular theorem. It's kind of like the converse of the equilateral theorem. It says that if a triangle is equiangular, then it is equilateral. So equiangular theorem says if it's equiangular, then it's equilateral. So if we start off by saying triangle ABC is equal, equiangular, then we can say that it is also equilateral. So they're like reverses of each other. They're like a converse of each other. So let's apply this use to solve for some variables and some triangles. So I want you to pause the video and work through these with your group. Go ahead and do that now. All right, let's start up here with number one. It looks like it's indicated that the triangle is equiangular. Well, if it is equiangular, I know that it's also equilateral. So if this is five, that means that these two also have to be five. Two. We see that it is equilateral, which means it's equiangular. And just a tip to keep you that you need to learn to help save you some time all equilateral triangles have angle measures of 60 degrees. So x will be 60. And last one, number three, we see that it's equiangular, which means that it also has to be equilateral. So we can set up an equation setting this equal to this. So we can say that 3x equals x plus 10. Then we solve for x. And that's some applications of the equilateral theorem and the equiangular theorem.